Hey guys, Armin Gun here. Welcome to part four of the CZ858. It's fine if you're just jumping into this gun right now, this video series. This is just my first video series on this gun. We'll probably bring it back in the future for some more shooting videos of accuracy, stuff like that. But uh, part one was the intro, the shooting video, the disassembly, and now finally the full overview of the gun. Uh, we're gonna go into a little more detail on the specs, on the military history, the production history, just give you guys a good overview on the gun so you're very familiar with the platform. So I'm not going to go into like, you know, this was this serial number gun, which was made at this date range, and I'm not going to get that specific. I'm just going to give you some, you know, some fun, you know, gun 101 on, on this platform. It is a great shooter, and for guys that like variety, I mean, it's, it's a fun alternative to your typical AK. And I guess I'm going to start there. This is not an AK. It looks, you know, it shares some some aesthetic appearances uh, with the AK, but internally, it's it's a totally different animal. This thing runs on a short stroke, not a long stroke system, gas system. It's got a, now this is very technical, but it has a falling breech block action, which is really cool. And if you wanna check out my previous uh, video where I talked about part three, where I talked about the disassembly and overview of the internals, um, you'll be able to see that in person and exactly how that mechanism works. It's also neat. Um, I refer to it in that video as a striker fired gun. It's not quite a striker, but it's also not a rotational hammer in the way you might think. Um, rotational hammer being like, and just, just as a quick, quick, really hard flex here with this uh, Terran Tactical Combat Master. Not mine, by the way. I'm just borrowing this from a friend. I don't really have the budget for a four or $5,000 handgun at the moment, but uh, this, this would be a rotational hammer a traditional hammer in that sense. This gun has something very different. And if you want to see it in, in greater detail, again, just check out my previous video. But it's a linear hammer. It, it's it's really neat. And uh, the closest thing I could think of, you know, until I read that it was a, a linear hammer was just a striker system. Um, but anyways, check out, again, that video if you want more detail on that specifically. Um, but let's, let's jump into this here. So VZ58 manufactured in Czechoslovakia. So this gun, history-wise, was designed in uh, like 1956, when they were starting to design and develop this gun. Adopted in 58, and then basically went immediately into production uh, up until 1984. And during that, you know, time span of, you know, 25-ish years, they made almost a million of these things. Um, Wikipedia told me 920,000. Um, so I didn't fact check that, but I, you know, that's that's the number I got was 920,000. Looked a couple other places too, and I couldn't see any reason to dispute that, so I'm gonna go with that. And that would be military contract guns. Now, there's a number of these things that have resurfaced, resurfaced now in in civilian guns for, for you know sporting purposes and collecting purposes. You know, Brownells now has their own version of this gun. They released a video about a month ago talking about that. There's VZ-58 in the States. There's Czech Small Arms, CSA, that's making a bunch of these guns as well. This gun, however, was made by CZ. So for all you guys out there, just think about the Bren, the Bren 805, 806. Same company that makes that made this gun. Same with the Scorpion Evil 3. Same manufacturer. So that's pretty cool. They're still making these, these uh, heritage guns. And the reason they were was actually due to, well, at least in, in part because of Wolverine Supplies which is a major distributor and firearms retailer in Canada. I'm in Canada, in case you didn't know. Um, and yes, we can have guns, and we can have cool guns. Um, just the magazines need to have these little things in them, so they can't hold more than five of these, which is sad face, depressing, but that's where we are. Um, I am at least trying to get around that by forming a company, officially, that can uh, can be a firearms you know, basic company. It should actually allow me to do a lot of cool things with this channel throughout this year. I'm still in that process, so I'm just going to say that really quickly and, and then move on here. But um, a really, really cool design. These are really popular in Canada. This one has a little bit longer of a barrel. We've got an 18.6 inch or something barrel here. These guns from the factory, military design, 15.4 inches. Metric for you guys, that's going to be 390 millimeters. Um, so, the, so jumping back to 1958, you know what? Uh, when they were just pumping these guns out. Czechoslovakia was in the middle of, well, what was then known as the Soviet Union. Um, probably somewhat like Yugoslavia, that kind of area. Um, and 
they didn't they had a history of doing hard, small arms manufacturing they didn't want to go with the ak despite you know the soviet or uh, the warsaw pact um for all the, the soviet union they wanted to standardize small arms to a degree at least they standardized the ammunition 762 by 39 which is what this gun is chambered in and uh, but the but check they wanted to keep their their own gun uh, much like there was the sks which which much of the soviet union used Czech used their VZ-52 and then 5257. The 52 was actually chambered in uh, Czechoslovakia's native cartridge, which wasn't 762 by 39. It was more of a 762 by, I think, 43 or something. Very similar, just a bit longer. Um, and the original 52 VZ-52 guns had that. 5257s were converted to, um, well, 762 by 39 which is cool, and uh, I had one for a while. I didn't take a video of it while I had it, though. I'm going to have to try and get a buddies in and do a video series on that one in the future because it is a very cool gun as well. Great option if you're looking for something, an alternative to an SKS because they're really neat guns. Really cool operating system as well. It's different than an SKS. But that's a tangent back to this gun. Huh. So they came out when they were making them in three different models. There was... The, the P, the VZ-58, and again, this is a CZ-858, denoting it was made by CZ, um, and 858, is, it's just a civilian model. A lot of these guns were built with, you know, leftover parts kits, like, you know, new old stock parts kits from the original guns. And the original guns, though, like, this is identical, even down to the paint, this has got that kind of military uh, gray color paint, which is kind of cool. Uh, CSA now makes the VZ-58s and do like a black kind of phosphate finish. I'm just going to grab one here real quick. Uh, I have a little 7.5 inch pistol. If you guys want to like check out like uh, VZ-58 USA, they get these guys in. 7.62x39. Just an awesome, awesome gun. Super fun to shoot. But uh, this is that black finish versus this is this military. Kind of gray if you can see that difference there. Nah, you can see it pretty good there. Cool. So... This also, the, again, the original gun would have been a P, which denoted having, you know, a full stock, and and that was that. Then the the um, V model, VZ58V, would have been the side folder, which is this stock right here. Nice little mechanism, you know, just folds over, actually be on the gun right back here, it folds over to the right. Simple stock assembly. These guns are much more friendly for swapping stocks than a typical AK. It's got a flat rear receiver, which is quite nice. The guns are milled instead of being stamped, yet they are still super light. Um, actually weighing only 2.91 kilograms or 6.42 pounds for my Imperial friends. And that would be, again, with a 15.4 inch barrel, not this 18.6 ish inch one that I have here. Um, magazines, again, different from an AK. No part compatibility at all with an AK. They're all unique parts. But this gun, these are super light mags. It's an aluminum alloy mag, not a steel mag like an AK. And just to bring it in real quickly here, I've got an RPK 40 rounder next to this VZ-58 uh, 30 rounder. And that's the difference. One really cool thing, they both have this little ribbed section here. However, this one has this little devil right up here. And this little guy is a bolt hold open on the last round. So check this out. Ta-da, basically, right? So it's it's cool. And that was a really neat feature that these guns had. You know, not a lot of AKs had that. Um, so on that note, I've explained everything else. Oh, except for the third model that these guys came out in as well. It was the VZ-58PI, which was basically kind of how this gun is set up. It's got the full wood stock, it's a bipod, but that one would have also had a dovetail to mount a, um, basically a night vision setup on there. And that would have been the checking my cheat sheets nsp2 night division i also would have had a really like conical like just like comically conical flash hider with this really big bell housing uh, my buddy uh look him up on instagram canadian warlord he's got a vz58 looks much like this but it has one of those flash hiders on it and it's really cool and again so that was more of your night vision flash hider that was that setup so that was the pi uh, also, if you guys want to just note really quickly here, this Beechwood stock, this was more common in the early guns. When they were really cranking them out, they went to this like kind of a laminate composite stuff that was made with like plastic, like a, almost like a resin with wood chips in it. And it's colloquially, or sorry, I should say affectionately referred to as beaver barf. 
for whatever reason. That's a lot of the, the parts kits come with those stocks and those furniture kits. It's that, it's that color. Just Google it and you'll see. Uh, I don't have a set of that here. Uh, okay, well, let's uh, let's talk about the ergs and I'll bust these guys out. Still got the bonus gun coming as well, which is uh, which is a cool one. Actually, the bonus gun is going to be another AK, not an AK gun, um, but it's a modern alternative to an AK, and it actually does take AK mags. Really cool gun. I really like it. I'm going to bust it out for a, a review here before long as well. So, ergs wise, if you want to see firsthand these ergs being used, check out my shooting video because I go through all those in good detail there. But uh, here you have the mag release. Right here, there's a nice little indent in the trigger guard for that guy, just to get your thumb in there. Um, so that pops these mags out. Double stack mag. Again, that bolt, last round bolt hold open, it can also be actuated by the button right here, which is pretty, pretty slick. So you just pull the bolt back, press the little button in, that retains it as well. Lift it back and it uh, it uh, disengages and then you can close these this forward. Tangent sights out to 800 meters, um, which is fine. Kind of a typical AK front sight post, hooded front sight post. It's got a very similar AK um, muzzle device as well, threaded. It's threaded, it's got this little, you know, retaining little pin there that catches in that little groove. It's got a bipod here, which you can just fold off. It disassembles from that little lug over here, which you can, all when it's in the forward uh, folded position. Also the same lug for a bayonet. There was also a um, under barrel mount for like a, what was a 26.5 millimeter grenade launcher or 40 mil grenade launcher or whatever, whatever they were using in the Soviet Union back then, but it was never actually adopted. Traditional VZ-58 sling. I'm sorry guys, I jumped ahead. I missed a couple of ergs here. So the safety selector, uh, basically when it's down like this, it's meant to kind of block your, your trigger figure. That would be safe when it's on fire. There you go. Actually, quite a nice trigger pull as well. Let's just, uh, let's explore that here a little more closely. Okay, there's your, your take up. Some whoosh, and then it shoe breaks. With a, yeah, there's some over travel. It's a military gun, guys. Reset. There. A reset actually it's it's pretty nice it's perceptible it's light and then you're actually got a pretty pretty nice pull from there so that's that's that um this charging handle is a bit upswept not quite galil style where it's basically vertical um but it's a bit upswept you know what because this gun was designed to be used without optics obviously being, being in 1958 this is okay you can still swing over with your with your left hand still swing or your right hand rather from this side swing over with your left hand pretty easily but uh, modern variations have them at 90 degrees so you can you know clear optics a lot of the modern guns now you can get you can drill and tap the receiver or if it is already done i know there's new csa guns the csa vz58s which is what brownells will have which is what other companies in the states will have they're typically pre-drilled from the factory with a little you can put a, um, a side mount on there and then you get this little uh you know qd scope rail which is good and uh for those well, again, the charging handle doesn't matter, but you can get 90 degree charging handles on the right and the left side. I have one for the left side made by NEA, a Canadian manufacturer. Really like that one. Just as a quick tidbit. And there's actually a lot more aftermarket support coming out for these guns. Uh, Zahal is a good one if you're international. They're based in Israel. They got a lot of stuff for this. Um, they carry a ton of fab defense furniture. If you really want to get a modern tricked out BZ-58, go check out those guys because you can get... AR stocks, the grips, all sorts of like quad rail and, and modern um, handguard uppers, even B&T guys, like the Swiss manufacturer that's doing all those crazy APC guns now, they made a rail system for this gun. Super cool. You can get different muzzle brakes as well. Like there's there's tons of actually options for this gun now, which is pretty exciting. So that's cool. Let's, uh, let's bust out a quick drum roll and uh, bust out this drum mag in this VZ58 pouch, which is kind of neat and toss this guy in because yes they made drum mags for these as well not an ak drum mag but still a drum mag and all drum mags are freaking cool this one however like most drum mags does not feature a last round bolt hold open but still like that's the dream right there this is basically an lmg setup which is 
which is pretty cool. Let's uh, let's be honest. That's that's pretty neat. This over here is a, another mag carrier, traditional for uh, VZ58. It just carries four mags. Kind of nice, kind of nice. And uh, that's that's about that. I have a feeling my light's gonna die here really quickly, which is kind of depressing. Um, on that note, hit me up on Patreon if you want to support the channel. All that funds goes into bringing more gun content out there and better studio equipment to up the production value, such as lights that don't run on batteries. Um, but uh, I'm gonna jump, drop this guy here. I guess we'll bring out the bonus gun and then I'm gonna give you a quick fun fact for those Canadians that are still out there. Um, and you know, anybody that is interested in these guns, because there's a cool, another cool version of this gun that CZ developed that I'm gonna talk about. But here is our bonus gun. If you didn't uh, guess what my earlier hints, this is the M plus M M10X. More of an AK, I suppose. Um, takes AK mags, takes this RPK. 40 rounder looking like a boss. It's pretty cool. It's a M-Lock rail. These are pretty, pretty cool guns. Again, non-restricted non option for Canada. Nice little kind of compensator flash hider there, four prongs. You're not going to get that ping all the time. Uh, the DMR safety, very important, guys. That's just an inside joke. Very nice. Actually, this, this is, trigger is, is kind of scary. Check out the reset on this thing. Like, <laughs> you're, you're like letting pressure off slowly, uh, like keeping that back pressure, and by the time it resets, you almost like double, you hit it back again. So these guns are double tap friendly. Let's just put it that way. Um, folding stock. This one's got a Zukov stock on there. Pretty nice option. I'm just going to pop out this, this camera. Apologies, it's going to be a little grainy. Um, oh, cool. It's not like this mag here. Cool gun. Kind of a SIG 550. There's some systems in there as well. Just a really unique system, and I, I like it. I like it. We'll do a full video review on this thing in the future, and... Uh, get more in depth with it but otherwise a cool platform nonetheless modern alternative to an ak and now for the last fun fact before i take off here <sighs> cz working in conjunction with wolverine supplies these guys if you're in canada look these guys up that's all i can really say they were working on a project called the cz 958 so this is the 858 the 958 was meant to be a modernization of this gun. It was full flat top uh, receiver, like optics ready. Really cool. And it, fortunately it didn't work out because the timing was bad. Um, basically they were trying to get that off the ground the same time that they were, they were pumping out the Evos, the Evo 3s and the brands for the United States market. And that just kind of like, you know, why work on a couple hundred of these guns for us Canucks when you can just dump thousands and thousands and thousands of Evo 3s and brands into the States for that very hungry market down there. So I understand why. Nonetheless, it was cool. They had two prototypes that got sent up to Canada and they got sold in the fall here. I remember seeing a post, Wolverine Supplies put it out there. They sold for just under $2,000 if I, if I recall correctly, Canadian. So 1,500 bucks US roughly. Neat, neat guns. Uh, look up if you guys can find any pictures of that. CZ958, there were some other articles and stuff put up by Caliber Mag and, and uh, things like that talking about them if you want to learn a little bit more about them if you're a really true VZ58 enthusiast. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks a ton, guys. It's been a ton. It's been kind of a long video, but this is this is a big gun for Canada, and I've got some of the small tactical versions as well. We're going to explore those in greater detail in the future here, but, uh, but this is it for now. So again, guys, thanks a ton. Armor Gun out.